What is up guys and welcome back to Coaching in Rules. I know it's been a long minute since you guys have seen my face and since I've last done a video like this and whatnot. So I'm back. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you hear any noise in the background, that's just my fan. Today has been a pretty hot day, so yeah. But anyway, let's get into the video. So we're going to be talking about ego check. This thing is like a coach's worst nightmare. Not even just coaches, but for our players as well. Like ego is something that can't really be, you can't really get rid of ego because everybody has it, no matter what. All types of players, coaches, we all have it. It's all in us, but it's about keeping that under control. So let's, let me just go off my experience. I had uh, two players who, of course, obviously they kept on clashing a lot and they made the team uncomfortable because of the way they play and whatnot. You know, it, it was somewhat selfish. And again, it's their egos. And of course, when they clash, it makes it uncomfortable for the rest of the players. And of course, when two players clash on the team, again, you know, one thinks they're better than the other. Again, basketball is all about a growing process. It's, it's about a team, it's a team sport. So at the end of the day, you all have got to put in work to win. Now, not everybody's going to be on the same page with that. And I think that's just something important going forward for any coaches that have any issues with an ego check. Now, what I can say is that you can control it. What I, what I want to say is that you can get rid of it, but you can't. You generally can't. Because even myself, I have an ego. But again, I don't come on here boasting and bragging and say, oh, I'm the best coach, I'm the best trainer. No, that's not what it's about. It's Everything's about a growing process. You know within yourself you're the best, but you've got to prove it. That's one thing that I think people get mixed up with is that, yeah, you've got to prove it to... You know, you've got to prove it within yourself because you can't lie to... You can lie to everybody else, but you cannot lie to yourself. Now, going back to the story with these two players. So, again, both of them, they thought that, you know, one of them was better than the other or the other one was better than the other. And it just caused a whole problem within the team. So, eventually, what I did, I put them both on the same team. So, then that way, they have to end up working together. Now, of course, they still clashed. They still caused issues. They still fought the same mindset like oh yeah i have to be better than you and i kept, and i kept on you know advising them and telling them look like you have to play within the team yeah it's not just about you two it's about the rest of the team now i understand there's nothing wrong with a friendly competition guys we are all capable of doing that it's sports you know basketball again there's nothing wrong with a friendly competition but when it goes too far and it starts leading to arguments fighting even that's when i feel like now we've crossed the line we have to go back to the drawing board so of course, these two players are still arguing, still going at it with each other. But the more I kept sticking them on their team or on each other's teams, that's when I was like, okay, now that they've done this, let's see how they are in an actual game. Because I, you know, I stick them together in drills, but I wanted to see what they're like in practice games. So in practice games, eventually over time, they became a lot better. Why? Because I told them straight, listen, Guys, it's not just about you, it's about the rest of your team. You've got to communicate to everybody. If you both want to be leaders, or if you feel like you're both like vocal enough, you need to start saying where your teammates need to be, where you need to be yourself. Yeah, again, basketball is also about holding people accountable. And I know sometimes within the team saying people don't like that, and that's where egos start to come out. But you have to make sure that a person who's leading the team is ready to call, is to ready, is ready to call on the team and say look listen guys drop everything it's time to play now this isn't just like a one-off game this could be a championship game this could be like a quarterfinals any type of any type of serious competitive basketball game that's what it can be luckily while i was doing it it was it was in the college basketball team it was just for a couple friendly matches and stuff but again i was trying to get them in the mindset of saying like what if this was a championship match what if this was this so they in that mindset they have to kind of think and be like well Okay, we kind of get it now because now we're not just thinking about ourselves. The problem is, the problem is with egos, guys, as well, is that egos can be, you know, you get different variants, all right? So some you'll get small and it pops up every now and then. Some you'll get, some players will just pop up with the ego every single day. They'll come into training every single time like, oh yeah, I'm better than you. Oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the leader, I'm the captain. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be scoring that last point or whatever. These things just happen and occur. And I'm just like, uh. it gets stressful. For any coaches out there, I'm sure you guys know, it gets stressful. 
Now, let me get into the coaches and why they can have an ego as well. I know a lot of people don't really think this, but coaches can also have egos as well. Now, if you're a coach that, again, you know, you care about the team, you know, you're trying to win games by just bringing in that team effort, that's fine. But coaches, in all of us, we all have egos. And this might be for a team setting, and this will be as a trainer setting. Because I know for a fact, I've spoken about in a video before, about uh, trainers having egos when it comes to like harboring players and whatnot. Again, we are all learning. We are all going through the growing process of basketball. All right, we've all been playing for years. We've, we're all experienced, we're all experienced players or coaches. Why can't we, I understand there's nothing wrong with having competition and there's nothing wrong with feeling like, oh, you know, you're better than somebody. But at the same time, it's like, check your ego because there's someone who has always got more clients, someone who's got, you know, better to, a better team, someone who has a, you know, just have more experience as a coach. So for any coaches out there that feel like, you know, their ego is not big enough or their ego is big enough or whatnot, again, like you guys can bring it, notch it down a bit to the point where it's just manageable. And even for, even for players who are, you know, struggling to build an ego, it's okay, you know, it will build over time. Just remember to keep it in check and know your place within the game as well, know what you're doing. And it's worse when, you know, coaches and players have an ego because that is going to be a catastrophic thing when it comes to like matches or training. Who's going to be listening to who at this point? So that's my kind of take on it and how I see with coaches. I think coaches, you know, the more you understand yourself is the, is the more you're going to realize and be like, okay, this is where I need to check my ego and this is where it needs to be controlled for the sake of the players. Because again, it's about them. But anyway, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for the video. Comment down your thoughts below about if you've had any players or coaches that you've interacted with that have had really big egos. And yeah, guys, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. And I will see you for the next one. Peace.